Hey guys, we're back with the final video in this series on our Go Power package and how amazing it really is. Yeah, so go check out the other videos to learn about the solar panels, the batteries, and what all we can run on our system. Today we're going to get into the nitty gritty of the different panels that we have, what they do, what it looks like, and what information we get through the system. I will tell you ahead of time, it's very simple, it's amazing, it gives you the information you need, but you can't launch satellites from it, okay? This is a simple, beautiful system, and I cannot wait to tell you all about it, so stick around and let's do it! Before I get into the panels, I want to do a quick overview of how solar works. First off, you have panels. Those then charge the batteries. The batteries will go to powering up the 12 volt system within your RV, or it'll go to an inverter, which then powers up the 120 volt system, such as your residential refrigerator or any outlets that you have. So that's just kind of a quick overview. So the controllers or the, the panels that I'm gonna show you today give you information on what's going on, not only with the panels, but with the batteries, with the draw, how much power you're pulling, both on the 12 volt and the 120 volt system. So that's what's cool about this system and I can't wait to show it to you. Okay, the first thing I'm going to show you is the Go Power battery monitor. What this does is it tells you how much charge your battery has, what percentage of it is left, what the current draw is on the battery, and how long with that draw it's going to last until it's finally down to zero. Now, one good thing is that the Go Power batteries have a built in system that doesn't let them get down to zero because you don't want that to happen on batteries. They have a memory sort of deal going on. You want to make sure that you don't go below. I want to say it's like 15%, 20%, but the batteries have a built-in system that shuts off before they get to that damaging lower amount. That being said, this battery monitor is going to show you a couple things. First thing is the voltage. The first part on the bottom left is the voltage. The next part is what your current draw is in amps. This particular monitor is combining both the 12 volt system draw and the 120 volt system draw. So for instance, if you're running your instant pot, and you have the ceiling lights on, this one's combining both to give you this number of how many amps you're drawing on the system. Next to that is watts. That's telling you how many watts you're pulling on the system. So this panel is really helpful to get a pretty good glimpse into what's going on in the system. And then above that, right below the percentage sign, it tells you how many minutes you have left for this whole system to keep running on the current percentage of the battery. So that's helpful too. If you are running something and you're thinking, hey, I wanna run this for about two hours, something like the air conditioner, or again, an instant pot. If you have 500 amp hours, but what you're running is pulling 100 amp hours, this particular monitor will tell you how long it's gonna take before that battery is at zero. So it helps you plan, especially if you're getting closer to the end of the day and you're not gonna be able to recharge, you can really get a lot of use out of this monitor and understand that, oh, I'm about to drain all my batteries by running this, maybe I'll cook outside, maybe I won't kick the air conditioner on, or you can make some different choices to make sure you have all the power you need at night when the sun's not up. Okay, I know some of this stuff can kind of be long and a little bit boring. So if you're looking for more of just an overview of how solar works, check out some of our other videos because we do go more into the package idea of how many batteries you need, how many panels you might need, and where to go to get those things installed. Okay, that's in another video. Right now, I'm going over the very specific details of the Go Power controllers that we have with our system and how they work. So if you're interested in that, stick with me. Okay, we're gonna go over the MPPT solar remote now. This remote is all about the panels. It gives me the voltage total of what it's bringing in in energy, the amperage that it's transferring that to, and then what sort of voltage is sending to the batteries. Ultimately, at the bottom, it does show the temperature of the panels, which can be really helpful when you're trying to figure out why am I bringing in more or less energy. There is a range that panels are most efficient and a range that they become really inefficient. So you can kind of understand how hot it is up there. You could also fry your eggs up there if it gets really hot and you don't have any propane. So I don't think GoPower wants me to tell you that. So we'll we'll nix that. That also gives you a status as to what's going on with the panels. Right now, my panels are floating. It says charging float because my batteries are at full, so it's not bringing in any more energy. 
Later, if I pull that down some, it's gonna tell me what's really going on. Is it bulk charging? Is it just trickle charging? So it gives you a really good idea of what's going on on your panels on the roof. Finally, I'm gonna go over this inverter charger remote, the IC series, okay? This particular remote is really helpful for understanding what's going on with the 120 volt system. Again, the inverter takes the power or the energy from the battery, turns it into 120 volts so you can use that with your refrigerator if you've got a residential refrigerator or anything you plug into an outlet is going to be associated with this particular monitor. So right now it tells me what's going on with the status. It's under the float stage again because the battery's at full. It tells me how many volts that my system is running at. That's really helpful if it gets really low or really high, there's a problem. And then it shows me how many amps I'm pulling on this particular panel. Now here's the good part. This panel is telling me on the 120 volt system alone, how many amps am I pulling? So this helps me know if I look at my other panel, my battery monitor, and it says 250 amps is what I'm pulling, I might be shocked at that. Why am I pulling so much? And then say, is this something on the 12 volt side that's pulling this or is this something on the 120 volt side? I can come over to this monitor here and see how many amps I'm pulling specifically on the 120 volt side. So it's extremely helpful. In addition to that, there's a mode on here whenever you're plugged into shore power where you can choose how many amps you're plugged into. So either 30 or 50 for us. So if I'm plugged into 30 amps and I set this at 30, the system's gonna know first off that I might use up to 30 amps of the outside shore power coming in. But if it notices I'm using less than that, it will take that shore power that's left and it will start charging my batteries. So it's just trickle charging in the background, whether I'm under trees or whether I'm in the sun, it doesn't matter. It's going to charge those batteries so they're full anytime I need to move on and, not, and disconnect from shore power. In addition, if I'm plugged into a lower amperage, like 30 amps, but then it's a really hot day and I wanna run both air conditioners and kick my Instant Pot on, I might be pulling 50 amps. Well, the good news is this system, knowing that we're plugged into 30, will compensate with the battery for the other amps that I need to get this thing running. And again, it shows it on the monitor, show it'll kick up that amperage to show I'm actually pulling more than what I'm plugged into, but it's not overloading outside because I've told it I'm plugged into 30 amps. Now, it is important to put in here what you're actually plugged into because if you put in 50 and you overload it, you could pop the breaker outside because it doesn't know what's going on outside until you tell it. Okay, final note on this uh, inverter charger remote panel is it does give you an option to turn the inverter off and the charger off. So if you ever ran into an issue or you need to do some repairs, you can always use this panel to kick those off. You can also program some things in here concerning what types of batteries you have, how many batteries you have. If you end up extending your battery bank, you would go in here and you can easily adjust the settings in here to match what you currently have. So that's a little overview of these amazing panels that give you good insight into your system and what's going on at any given time. Hey guys, I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, leave us a comment, or if you got any questions, drop them down there as well. Our goal was to try to simplify solar because when we started, it was very confusing. We weren't sure how much money to put into it, what sort of package to get. So our goal with this whole series was to just make it a little easier for you. Let us know if we accomplished that. Yeah, we just wanna make sure when you get out in nature that you have everything that you need and you're confident that you will not run out of power. <laughs> it's very stressful. <laughs> right. You wanna avoid that. All right, listen, we'll see you next time. We hope to see you out boondocking. Definitely let us know that you're... <laughs> Amen! <laughs> we <were> so, <laughs> so Okay, definitely let us know if you're out in the woods and you're <laughs> boondocking beside us. We would love to see you there. That's creepy. We hope to see you out there boondocking and enjoying yourself in nature. <laughs>